one of the great rivalries, isn't it? There's probably one of the, you think about Makaro and Borg, you think about Muhammad Ali and George Foreman, and then you think about the Ashes. You know, some of the, in sport, it's just one of the, the rivalries between our two great countries. There's so much history, there's so much drama, there's so much theater leading up to it. There's opinion, there's speculation, selection, discussion, but all that really matters is when that first ball gets bowled. The battle between bat and ball, the skill, the strategy, that's what matters. All the other trash talk and all the stuff that goes on before, it's just part of the theater of it. But when it, for that first ball comes, man, that is magic. And that's magic Ashes cricket. It's the only place in the world, and I played a lot of cricket, I played a lot of test matches, where, so we go back to 2005, walk out to bat, and you know, when you walk out for a test, you walk through the long room, you're nervous, you're living the boyhood dream, but you're still nervous. You walk over onto the carpet, which is the grass, and you walk out, and everyone's been waiting, the build up, build up, build up, build up, and I was taking the first ball. So I'm at this end, I'm at the media center end. Steve Harmison's got a brand new Duke's ball in his hand. He's at the pavilion end, <sighs> taking a few breaths. Steve Harmison starts running into ball. Your heart is pumping, pumping, pumping. Steve Harmison's heart's pumping, pumping, pumping. But then the most weird thing happened. It all went silent. It's the only place in the world that I've experienced the first ball of the ashes. Instead of the build up where you hear the noise and the whistling and blah, 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 and the bowlers running in, the crowd builds, builds, builds and you sort of get energy from it because you you can hear it, you can feel it. Come on, give, blah, 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 watch the ball. Here, I went silent. And it is the most bizarre thing. It doesn't happen anywhere else, just at Lord's. Complete silence. It was like the silence was deafening because it's not what you're used to hearing. So, and in that particular world, the silence, so you're sort of going, you're almost looking while like everyone's gone home or they've turned the, the switch off. And that first Ashes in 2005, ball flew past my nose and Grant Jones takes it above his head. And I still remember, I think Ian Bell was at bat pad, he walked towards me. Because there was a point, starts walking towards me, the slip start walking. Steve Harmison was about here. And I remember Maddie Hayden walks down to me and he says, be ready little fella, that these guys are up. They're on, and their mindset from ball one, you could just tell it was, mate, they're alive. And then the second ball flew, hit me on the elbow, I had a big, big swelling on my elbow. Nick, about a few minutes later, Matthew Hayden got hit on the helmet. Then Ricky Ponting got hit under the eye. Still bears the scar today. It was the best hour of cricket I've ever played in. Right here, 2005. It all started from the first ball, but it was the best hour of cricket I've ever played in in my life. It was just uh, magic. You knew you were alive.